The United States has been at war in Afghanistan for 18 years, and the American role in Syria continues to evolve with no clear end in sight. Until recently, retired General Joseph Votel oversaw those conflicts and others as head of the U.S. military's Middle East operations. Stephanie Sai speaks with Votel, but first, she has an update on the conflict in Syria. From the air and on the ground, up to three million people living in northern Syria are being boxed in with nowhere to go. President Bashar al-Assad's forces are continuing their onslaught in northwest Idlib province, the last rebel stronghold. The ceasefire announced by Assad and his Russian backers at the end of August has been all but broken, according to Idlib resident and civilian activist Joma al-Qassam. The airstrikes uh, in the recent offensive are more concentrated towards the rebel front lines. This is the burned fire uh, land, or what they call the burned land strategy that the Syrian regime, Syrian army, and the Russian backup of the of the air is demolishing all these uh, architecture. While Idlib burns, hundreds of thousands of residents are fleeing toward Turkey, joining a bottleneck of refugees from other parts of Syria, packed into overcrowded camps like Al Hol. The camps for the desperately displaced are fertile ground for extremists looking for recruits. Camps across the border are also at their breaking point. Turkey is already host to 3.6 million refugees, having made a deal with Europe to keep them from migrating further. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan is now threatening to release the refugees unless Europe provides more aid. This either happens or we will have to open the gates. Either you provide support or excuse us, but we can only tolerate this so much. Are we going to carry this weight alone? Turkey is also poised for its own conflict in northeast Syria against the very forces that have helped the U.S. beat back ISIS. The Syrian Kurds are viewed by Turkey as terrorists, threatening to carve out their own nation. Caught in a cross-current of dueling interests, the U.S. agreed to help clear the northeastern border of Syrian Kurdish outposts and began patrolling the border along with Turkish forces. But Turkey's foreign minister says the U.S. isn't doing enough. There are some joint patrols, but other than that, the steps that have been taken or the steps that are said to be taken are cosmetic steps. We are seeing that the United States wants to enter another stalling process. They are trying to get Turkey accustomed to this stalling process. But our stance on this matter is very clear. The multi-front war in Syria has divided allies and diffused attention. UN Human Rights Commissioner Michelle Bachelet urged the world to refocus. These figures are appalling, shameful, and deeply tragic. In a bid to take control of territories, there appears to be little concern about taking civilian lives. Any further escalation will only result in further loss of life and displacement of civilians who have already been forced to repeatedly flee in situation of dire humanitarian conditions. So I appeal to all parties to the conflict and to those many powerful states with influence to put aside political differences and halt the carnage. Meanwhile, back in Idlib, Joma al Qasam says his fellow countrymen, women and children, are losing hope. All of these humanitarian efforts that we have seen actively uh, being involved in the Syrian crisis are shrinking uh, and decreasing the fund that is paid to or allocated for the Syrian response. But what we are seeing is the worst humanitarian crisis, let's say, or part of the Syrian crisis that has been chronically occurring since the last nine years. But unfortunately, this is the weakest response. According to the New York Times, the U.S. is boosting its military response in northeast Syria. It's sending 150 additional forces to monitor the border with Turkey. Joining me now to discuss this conflict in Syria and other fronts is retired General Joseph Votel. Until April, he led U.S. Central Command, which oversees military operations in the Middle East. He is now a fellow at the Middle East Institute. General Votel, it's a pleasure to have you with us here at the News Hour. Is there a solution in Syria? 
Well, it's just, certainly there is. I mean, the solution is we have to get to we have to get to a political settlement of the of the situation here. The military operations can only do so much, but ultimately the international community has got to come together. Hopefully, under the under the uh, under the support of the United Nations to uh, to move forward with a political solution here in uh, in Syria. But what role does the U.S. play? The U.S. really isn't involved in a place like Idlib. It really isn't involved in the Syrian civil war war. Uh, beyond it wanting to contain ISIS, what role should the administration be playing in Syria right now? Well, I think the role the United States should be playing certainly is that we have led a, we have led a 79 member coalition to address the threat of ISIS. And we've done that very effectively and we used our partners on the ground to do that. And now in places like North and East Syria, we are working with our partners to help stabilize these areas so that we can create a platform uh, that, uh, that would allow for for, allow for the international community to move forward. You oversaw the withdrawal of most U.S. troops uh, from Syria last year after it was ordered by President Trump via Twitter. You were not informed or consulted uh, before that move. Had you been consulted, what would you have said? Well, I, I don't think it would have been, as I've said, I, I don't, in congressional testimony, I don't think that would have been my recommendation at the time. Uh, I think it's important to, to remember that it, in December, at the time when that announcement was made, we were still very engaged in a, in a military campaign down in the middle of Euphrates Valley. We had not yet completed uh, the defeat of the caliphate. And, uh, and so we needed to finish that. Uh, so uh, it would not have been my advice to, to, make, that, to make that decision at that, at that particular juncture. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis actually resigned over that decision. Six months since you've retired from Central Command, are you seeing ramifications of that troop withdrawal? And do you think ISIS is potentially resurgent still in well, Syria? Yeah, that's, a, that's an excellent question. I think we've always been concerned about the, the resurgence of ISIS. Uh, it's important to recognize that what we accomplished was the defeat of the physical caliphate, the, the, the state-like entity that, that ISIS tried to, uh, tried to impose, and it actually did impose for a long period of time, which we, com I think, completely dismantled. But that doesn't mean all the fighters went away. What we've learned over time with these types of organizations is that we do have to keep pressure on them. Uh, they've gone to ground. They've gone to small cells. So we have to, we have to stay after them in terms of that. We've, we've known that that's going to be a requirement, and that's, that's a key aspect of, I think, what we're doing now with our partners on the ground. Let's talk about Afghanistan. Troops there also under your command. Troops there also promised a withdrawal. President Trump called off secret talks he had planned with the Taliban and the Afghan government last week over the death of an American soldier. Some 2,000 American soldiers have been killed there in Afghanistan. When lawmakers and others criticize negotiations with the Taliban because they consider them terrorists, and mind you, yesterday was the anniversary of the 9-11 attacks, what would you say? The strategy the administration has put in place that was announced in August, in August of uh, 2017 was to move towards an end state of reconciliation between the Taliban and the government of Afghanistan. Uh, and so that's what the object of all of our military activity and a lot of our diplomatic activity has been since then, is to create the conditions that would bring the Taliban and the, and the, uh, and the government of Afghanistan together. And, and through our special envoy, that's what a, a bulk of his work has been over the last year plus to try to to try to do that. This will not be resolved militarily. What do we stand to lose as a nation if we pull out now? Well, I think we have to remember the reason why we went to Afghanistan. We went to Afghanistan because Afghanistan turned into a, into a land of instability that allowed an organization like Al-Qaeda to plot an attack that killed 3,000 of our citizens. Is it not still completely unstable? I don't know that it's completely unstable. There certainly is an element of instability that's being caused by the Taliban and other terrorist groups that operate in that particular area. Uh, but it's in our interest. It's in our national interest to uh, ensure that uh, that we we try to get Afghanistan as stable as we can, and that the instability that remains in Afghanistan does not uh, impact our other our other interests. You recently wrote a letter along with many other generals, more than two dozen, about the Trump administration's policy toward refugees. And your mm -hmm. argument is that drawing down the number of refugees this nation accepts could actually destabilize our allies as well as threaten our own national security. Can you explain that? 
Sure. Uh, you know, one of the one of the provisions I think that we addressed in the letter was uh, was a, a provision for the special immigrant visa. This is a program that was set in was put in place a number of years ago to offer an opportunity for those who assisted us in our in our in our military operations to come to the United States. I think what we have to remember is many of these uh, these Afghan citizens that that uh, served with us as interpreters uh, not only put themselves but put their put them put their families at risk in support of our our national security objectives and Iraqis so, as well and Iraqis as well and so this is uh, I think this is it's important for us to follow through I think and provide them the safety and the opportunity to uh, to come to our country and the special immigrant visa the P2 uh, uh, visa program is in place for Iraq these are extraordinarily important programs and they send a very strong message to our partners and people that put it on the line for us that we are we are with you and we are going to stay with you. You know, the, we've talked about the, uh, the number of refugees in countries like Turkey, but also Lebanon, Jordan. All of these uh, countries, Afghanistan, Pakistan, have absorbed huge numbers of refugees. And this is, a, this is a challenge for the international community that we have to address. And I think the United States has to play a role in being a, seen as a leader on this. Uh, so that, that's, what, that's what motivated me to, uh, to support this letter. General Joseph Votel, former head of Central Command, thank you so much. Thank you. It's great to be with you.